McKay, you've written a couple books about toxins in and around the house. Um, when did GMOs become a part of that mix? Last time we talked, we didn't really talk much about that. When did, when did that get into kind of your crosshairs and why? Well, so the, the last, well, the first of three books on this topic I wrote was, uh, is now called Contamination about uh, chemicals that are in all, all our consumer products, including in that book, uh, lawn chemicals. So chemicals that people spray on their suburban lawns. Turns out that a lot of the chemicals that people put on their lawns are also used at much larger scales by you know, industrial food producers. So when you're talking about herbicides or insecticides or on the other side, synthetic fertilizers, uh, those are used in very large quantities by uh, industrial agriculture. So I started thinking about that and then the question became much bigger, which is how do we create our food? How does the industrial food system, how has it evolved? How has it come to feed us? Uh, what are the various health and environmental consequences of that? Uh, and so I'm sure you've done programs uh, before about whether GMOs themselves, like a genetically engineered plant, is or is not dangerous for human health. And that is one question to talk about. And, and lots of people have got very strong opinions about that. And I I'm, think that's an important question, but there are also lots of other questions to talk about, which is how does the GMO question fit into the larger industrial food system? So it turns out, uh, you know, you'll often hear companies say that uh, we need GMOs to feed the world, feed a starving world, they'll say, uh, which is a very disingenuous marketing claim because the truth is that, in, at least in the United States, genetic engineering is not being used to support small-scale farmers in the developing world. GMOs are used to create, for example, about 40% of GMOs are used to make ethanol for car, to make, you know, that cars eat. 40% uh, of GMOs are used to feed animals, which we then turn into very cheap processed fast food. So cheap hamburgers, cheap chicken nuggets, that sort of thing. So uh, the consequences for our health and the consequences for our environment are much bigger and more complicated than simply this anxiety about whether eating a plant that isn't engineered in a lab is or is not dangerous for us. Also, it's important to remember that almost by definition, genetically engineered plants are being designed to be sprayed with synthetic herbicides or insecticides, uh, which is to say that it's not just about the GMO itself, it's also about the chemicals sprayed on GMO. So the question of health and GMOs is really quite a complicated one and not just limited to engineering. Wow.